Imagine being the seed. You are surrounded with earth. The seed knows that if he has to be put upside down, the root will do a U-turn to go down and the trunk also will do a U-turn to go up. My name is Gilbert Daniel Nassim. I am a professor and scientist at Barilan University. I was born in Italy and uh, I went to French schools because from my mother's side, coming from Egypt, we spoke French at home. And then I went to study engineering at the Politecnico di Milano. And I was uh, fortunate to meet an entrepreneurial professor who sent me to France as the first experimental case of Erasmus program exchange, exchange program, where I um, went to the Ecole Centrale in Paris studied electrical engineering there and uh, graduated with uh, the two degrees. I applied for a PhD at MIT and I was uh, zoché to be accepted at that uh, marvelous place, which is basically is one of the top universities in sciences. And I did my doctorate there, my PhD. And uh, you can see in this picture a very moving moment where I have my daughters putting the hood on me. It's kind of a medieval tradition that they have in the States. They put this kind of scarf when you graduate, and here I had my, uh, my daughters putting it on me. From there, I, um, I joined the uh, Barilan University in the chemistry department, and that's where I am right now. Were you religious your whole life? Observant? Absolutely not. The school where I went, the French school I mentioned before, was a school run by French nuns. We didn't observe much at home, but we always believed in God. I remember the Shema Israel, and I had my grandfather, Rabbi Shalom, who taught us some basics, and I remember going uh, to, the, to the synagogue on Yamin Moraim and also going to Shabbat, but it took much longer to really understand what Judaism was, which was only some 20 plus years ago when uh, we moved to the States, that uh, I met a very inspiring rabbi, and then that's the, that was the start. Many people wonder if science contradicts Torah thought and the belief in God, yet here you are, a religious Jew, you're a scientist and a professor. How do you reconcile the two? It's a funny question because when you realize how complex the world is, how complex all the phenomena are, how everything is synchronized in an amazing way for us to be here to have this talk together, then you realize that all this requires a creator. The deeper I look into science and scientific points, the more I see the hand of God. When we see complexity, organization, like David Dormillo used to say, plan and purpose, then it absolutely requires to be a creator. Would you be able to share something specific with us? Let's take an example really, really simple. A seed. A seed has, on one side, there is the root that comes out. On the other side, you have the trunk that comes out. Now, as far as I know, the farmers, when they plant the seeds, they don't pay attention to put them in the right orientation. They put the seeds on a random way. And when you look at how the seed behaves, the first thing he does is to put the root going down. How did the seed know about this? Imagine being the seed. You have a GPS, you have ways that tells you where, where down is. You are surrounded with earth, but the seed knows that if he has to be put upside down, the root will do a U-turn to go down and the trunk also will do a U-turn to go up. That's one of the things we should marvel about. And you can see from those images, uh, time-lapse images that, that you see exactly this, depending on the orientation of the seed, you always see the root going down and the trunk going up. And then, what is the seed? I see the seed as the combination of three things. A supercomputer, an encyclopedic database, a humongous database, and a chemical factory. So let's understand this. So the seed is there. The program says, now put the root down, draw the root. So it starts drawing the root. Once the root is going down, it says, try to grow the branches of those roots so to get more of a grip into the earth. Once it has some of the grip, it says, okay, now it's time to grow the trunk. So it starts growing the trunk. And of course, the materials of the root and the materials of the trunk are not necessarily the same. So the chemical factory has to say, okay, now supply some molecules for the root and now different molecules for the trunk. And the trunk starts growing up. And you can see how strong the force is for uh, lifting the earth and get out of the earth for this trunk. And this trunk starts growing up and starts growing also in size. And eventually from green, it becomes more wood, which is a different material. So there should be the chemical factory somehow has to supply all these materials. At some point, the program of the supercomputer says, hey, hold on a second, now we have to start growing branches. So it needs to decide where to grow branches. And branches is not an easy thing because the purpose at the end is that all the leaves of the tree will maximize this, their exposure to sun. So the calculation of where the branches should be and the secondary branches and so on should be and where the leaves should grow is not easy. 
it should be a program that optimizes, maximizes the sun exposure. So now you have the program says, okay, grow the trunk, and then new program comes in, grow the branches. Third program comes in, grow the side branches, so the branches on the branches. And eventually says, okay, now grow the leaves. Hold on a second. The leaves are green, the wood is brown, and they're different material. In fact, the leaves is a very complex system where you know about photosynthesis, one of the most e efficient uh, chemical conversions that, that convert basically to sun and uh, produce oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide at night. And all the leaves should be positioned in a way that they don't obstruct the sun from the other leaf. So you need to maximize sun exposure. The seed was not green. The earth is not green. Water is not green. Air, oxygen is not green. Where is the green coming from? So somehow in there, there should be a production of something that is green. And then the program continues, a new program kicks in and says, now we need to grow the flowers. So hold on, flower. So now the flowers, some are white, some are yellow, some are pink. Where are those colors coming from? Same discussion as before. And then once the flower grows, at some point, a new program kicks in and says, now fruit, we want the fruit in there. So you start deciding, you first decide, where are you going to grow the fruit on the tree? And again, you have to make sure that the fruits are not kind of colliding one with, with, with each other. So they should be in specific positions to maximize the dispersion of those fruits on the, on the branches. And when the fruit grows, there's something I want you to think that is absolutely fascinating to me. Is, let's say, an orange. An orange is kind of a round fruit. A, when you have a round, let's say, a sphere, you have a volume. And you know the volume goes with the cube of the radius. And the surface, the, the, the peel, goes with the square of the radius. So one goes with the cube, one goes with the, with the square. From the same stem that gives the nourishment for the, the orange to grow, it needs to calculate exactly how much to put inside and how much to put outside, and there are different rates. One is a cube of the radius, one is a square of the radius. So everything should be calculated precisely. If it's not calculated precisely, either you have a peel that is flopping, flapping around outside, or you have a peel that breaks because it stretches too much because the inside grows too fast. So the two growth should be synchronized. It's a fascinating problem. And then the orange is green at the beginning. What is this green? Green to confuse with the leaves. It kind of sends you the message, hold on a second, don't pick me up yet. I'm not ready, I'm not tasty yet. At maturity, it changes color. It changes color, becomes orange. From green to orange means there is a chemical uh, development here that, that happens to change the color, right? And when it's orange, it's kind of saying, hey, come, pick me up, I'm ready, eat me up. And then you see that the peel is amazing. The peel protects from the rain, from the elements. It has even antibacterial properties, it kind of repels the insects. And it has even a, a nice smell when you squeeze the orange peel. You can smell that, that nice thing. And when you orange open the peel, you see that inside it's white. Hold on a second, why, why is it white? Because you don't need the color when, once you open it. You know you are gonna eat it. Another thing that's interesting is the stem itself. The stem is very, very strong and it supports the fruit. At some point when it gets to maturity, the stem kind of becomes weak in a way that it becomes so weak that eventually the fruit can fall down and we can pick it up. Synchronized exactly. So when you think about it, it's amazing. You have here a supercomputer, a, a huge database of information with this program that needs to know when to grow the, the the roots, the trunk, the branches, the secondary branches, the leaves, the flowers, the, the fruits, synchronize with the, all this with the chemical factory that has to deliver different molecules for the, for the root, for the trunk, for the leaves, for the flower, for the inside of the orange, for the outside of the orange. And all this is in there, in that seed. These are the type of questions that they're fundamental, but people rarely ask. Yes, because we take things for granted. You know, we plant a seed. We get an orange and uh, it's obvious. We call it in Hebrew, herger. We're used to it. So we rarely ask such kind of questions. Interestingly enough, Rashi says that who is someone intelligent? It's not someone who may think, oh, someone who knows a lot, encyclopedic knowledge. No, 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 no. Rashi says, an intelligent person is Shoel der Chochmah, someone who asks intelligent questions. So the purpose here is to, for us to ask intelligent questions and a question like for example how do we go from seed to orange that's a good question and by the way i want to tell you on this cycle i told you quite a few things we have a lot of questions we may not have all the answers but at least we have good questions